Welcome to the Dice Tower, a video cast all about the world of board games and the people who play them. This is the 2010 edition of our annual Top 100 Board Games of All Time, featuring the Vassal family. start our top 100 countdown. We'll do five of my games and five of Melody's games and you're gonna see numbers 100 to 96. Let's get right to them. Number 100, Double Shutter. Double Shutter comes in a really nice case and you're rolling dice to knock down numbers and it's basically luck although I guess there's some skill to knocking down numbers. Melody, why do you like this game so much? I like this game because you're trying to get as many numbers as down as possible before it's the other person's turn. Do you think it's good quality? Yes, it's a very cool looking box and the game is mostly the box. Right, in fact you can put the, the, the lid on the box and store it that way. It's a very simple game. How long does it take to play, you think? Like two minutes? Yeah, there's not many games you can say that about. Shut the super box. Number 100, Magic the Gadgeray. In my intro, I said that Magic the Gathering didn't make my top 100. I had miscalculated. It actually comes in at number 100. But that's still pretty impressive for a game that came out a while ago. Woohoo! Magic the Gathering. Now, I am a feared of collectible card games, and Magic the Gathering is certainly one of those where you buy cards, you buy packs of overpriced cards, very overpriced, just to get a few cards that are are worth playing. But let me tell you this: as a board gamer. I like to buy collectible card games occasionally to buy complete decks and play with them. This is a treasure trove time to play Magic Gathering. You don't need to be competitive. You don't need to have the latest cards. There is tens of thousands of different cards out there that you can play with. I, you can, I went out and bought this whole box with just tons of different cards. And then, so we're having piles of time with this. We don't ever need to buy more cards. I might buy a deck occasionally here and there, but it's a lot of fun. It has a very high collectible aspect. My daughter really likes it. You'll see it later on in her top 100. But this is a good game worthy enough of making my top 100, even if it did just eek on the list. Number 99 is Revolution. Revolution is a board game in which you're trying to control different areas with via area control and get different points, but that's done by blind bidding behind a board. On this board, you're putting money or blackmail or force. You're trying to control these different people, but everyone else is doing the same thing at the same time. And so you use the mega shield to hide what you're doing. Each turn, you put down your stuff, you find out who does what, and you go on. But it's the combination of blackmail being greater than money and force being greater than blackmail. Some characters are colored. Certain colors cannot be blackmailed or hurt by force. And there's just different things. This is in my top 200, actually. It's a very good game. I like this game because it takes a lot of strategy, trying to outthink the other person, like, what are they going to get? And that's why I like it. It takes a lot of strategy, and you're just trying to put out pe little pieces and just put them on the board. Number 99, Boards of Vegas. Here's a new game to the list. Just came out this year, Lords of Vegas, but comes in at 99 because it is a really fun game. You know, I looked at it and thought, wow, that looks neat. There's dice all in it. And it's a game about building a casino in Las Vegas. And there's, but, but unlike other games of this genre, or just another, another old building game, this one actually has a bit of gambling in it as you are trying to build in the right places. Sometimes expanding with the chance that someone will steal that from you. Trying to restructure a casino. Lots of rolling dice, but it's all controlled. And it's very interactive and very fun. My only disappointment is that it's four players. I wish it was five or six, but that would probably slow the game down too much. But if you like Chinatown, one that I've always found enjoyable, this is the same thing, but with a lot of luck and bidding thrown in. Very fun and very cutthroat. Number 98, Top Top Woodman. In Tok Tok Woodman, you have this tree that you've made out of plastic pieces, and each player is given an axe, and on the player's turn, they must hit the tree with the axe twice, and they're trying to make bark pieces fall off without making the outer pieces fall off, because when an outer piece falls off, 
then it's worth five points, uh, minus five points, and for each bark piece you knock off, it's worth one. So what you're trying to do is knock off just the bark without knocking off the top, which, as you can see, Nelly's not very good at. I like this game because you're cutting off the bark, not the inner pieces. I really think it's funny to see other people get like a lot of inner pieces fall off, but I do not like that happening to me. So I try to make it harder for others, but easier for me. I like it because it's a really nice artwork and it's fun to play. Number 98 is Dixit. Dixit's another new game for the first year here. This game just won the Spiel des Jahres, which is the game of the year in Germany, and some people argued against that, but I think those people are crazy because this game's fantastic. It's a party game using cards with weird artwork. And that weird artwork, and you're not sure what it means, used, put them down, one player gives a clue about the card they put down, everyone else puts down the card trying to match that clue. We turn them over after mixing them up, trying to guess who the, the original, what the clue giver's card, original card was. What is it? And when you play with people who are really good and try to use words measured as possible, uh, steeped in pop culture and whatever you can to get out of these cards, it's a very interesting psychological experiment, a ton of fun, uh, a very good party game. Uh, while it's light, but thinking at the same time. And that combination, I think, makes it a worthy addition to my top 100 list. Number 97, Flushy. In Fusi, you're trying to win socks. These are count as points, basically. On your turn, you roll a die, and that tells you how many of the little Fusi monsters you're going to put on this catapult here. So, Melody rolled a six, so she'll put six on it. And then, after we put all six on it, she's going to see how many she can get into the box using the catapult. Ready? And go. Okay, she didn't get any in, and you, sometimes you give someone an extra chance. But for each one you get in, you get a sock. Whoever gets the most socks is the winner. I like this game because I really like the part where you're catapulting the little flushy character. Then I just like how they go cannibal into the sock drawer and dress up as into socks. And it's just really cute of how they cannibal. Number 97. Look, look, look. This is the sixth year in a row now that Liberté has made my list, although it started at eight and now it's quite a bit farther down on the list. But that does not mean I think it's a bad game. Remember, top 100 equals great games. And I suspect with the new version coming out in uh, a month or maybe even it's out now, I'm not sure, but I know that Liberté was being reprinted and I'm very excited about that because Liberté is a fantastic game that really portrays the French Revolution. It's very chaotic and yet controlled at the same time. You're trying to control as many different regions, but even if you're losing beyond belief, there's still other ways that you can go about causing a total revolution or having the monarchy come back into power. Uh, one of Martin Wallace's uh, earlier games, and I think one of his best. It's a really fun game and certainly carries the historical flavor. Number 96, Word on the Street, Junior! Word on the Street Junior is a party game in which players sit on opposite sides of the board. They draw a card that says something like this, something that moves slowly, and then that turn must think of a word that is yeah. something that moves slowly. Like a turtle. Okay, and then they move each letter towards their side of the board for each time it's in that word. So T U R T L and E. If you get a letter off on your side of the board, you get a point, and the first team to get eight is the winner. this game is. I still remember the first time I saw this game. I was given this game when I was a young teenager and it was just absolutely floored me when I played Fortress America for the first time. It's another game that's been on the list for six years even though one of the years it ducked out of the top 100 into the top I think it was 110 position. But Fortress America 
it, even though I haven't played it for quite a long time, I still think about it and still think about how much fun it is, and I still say, man, I want to get that game to the table as soon as I can. It's so much fun to play the USA. It's so much fun to play the Invaders. Well, maybe not the Red Invader, but it's so much fun to see this, and it's so thematic, and yes, it's maybe not as critical as it was in the 80s when I first played it, but I still have a very soft spot for this game, and if you can ever find one at a garage sale, check it out. It's another worthy addition to the Top 100. All right, well, we'll be back in our next video with our next five from 90 to, uh, 91 to 95. So we still have, we have 90 of the games we've done. There are 95 better games that we're going to show you. But these are great games, and we're having a real blast doing this. See you next video. Bye! Tune into our next show for more Top 10 Gaming Goodness, or check out our website at www.thedicetower.com for more reviews and Top 10 lists. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.